Hey everybody, so here's a really quick update on the very first fiber optic for the kit. This is dealing with that wall that I had to pull apart because of the photo etch that I put on. So I got a bunch of stuff from the fiberopticstore.com and uh, this all comes in this really nice convenient spool. I forget how much was on this, probably like 75 feet. So the trick that I do is uh, I'll take one end, thread it through one, loop it out at the back, thread it back through, back through, and back through. So in this case I did that three times. There's three rows of holes for the windows. And I definitely had to uh, show this off as I do this final snip here. Now you definitely want to leave a whole bunch on the front as a uh, safety measure basically quarter inch, half inch, I think that's probably a full inch right there. All this will be snipped off later on, but for now it's going to stay. I expanded the hole on the back here just a little, made it a lot wider. This is .50 fiber optic and it's just big enough for these holes here. And as you can see, pulling it down fairly tight, if I can uh, get the angle right there, there's still a fair amount of bend in it. And if you actually crease this, or give it a uh, splint. Let me uh, do it to an end here. Basically, once you get a bend in it like that, you've ruined the fiber. It's a kink, right? So uh, at this point, the light will not really transmit all the way towards the end because inside of the fiber itself, there's a glass coating that actually propels the light down its length. So you never want to get any kind of uh, kink or crease in the cable itself. And I'm hoping that that should be just wide enough. So all the holes, the uh, hole rather that I drilled on the far side is just enough to accommodate all that. It's a little tight, but once I put some clamps on this to seal it back together, this is exactly what we need. I ran a lot of extra length off the back because I didn't know how much I was really going to need because I don't know where I'm putting the lights yet. However, never throw out any of the spare fiber you've got because you can always use that length somewhere else at some point. It definitely gets tricky having a lot of little threads hanging around, but uh, it's worth it. So to get this fiber to sit in here, I'm going to uh, pull out the old white glue. Just regular Elmer's here. Uh, super glue will utterly destroy fiber optic. Never ever use it. However, once fiber optic is coated with something like white glue, then the super glue rests on the white glue and it won't damage the fiber because it's not really getting to it. I'm just going to blob this in here real good. Make sure you get under the actual fiber itself. Lift it out a little. Make sure it's getting all over the place. And uh, now I'm just going to clamp this down. Real gentle at the very edge. So once all this dries, we'll be doing really good. It'll be nice and solid. It's not going to fall out at all. So right here you can see all the loops where I uh, flipped the fiber back into itself. Is that all of them? That looks like it. I'll just trim those down for uh, neatness. There. So you definitely want a lot of all this in the front. There's no problems with enamels going on to fiber optics. So uh, basically this will act as its own painting mask when I go to spray paint everything. And uh, now that this is sitting, I'll uh, let it sit there. Another quick note I'll mention is uh, keeping track of all this. As you can see, all these ends here is definitely a really huge mess. And let me just trim these here. Right, so now we've got just a whole bunch of single strands, and I'll actually take a little bit off of there. So now they're all nice and even, and I'll tape this off with just a little bit of masking tape. to keep it under control.
Now the question is, how do I know which one of these threads here goes to those holes right there? Well, the only way to really know is to uh, pull out an LED, hold it to each one, and go from there. If I had separated these out before I glued them, uh, maybe it would have been easier, but, uh, you know, into the four, the three, and the four rows there. But each one is going to get its own color, and I we'll see if it really matters. I'll have to watch an episode again to see if the lights are any particular order. But, like I said, just pulling one aside, putting an LED on this, and looking at that will tell you where it is. And then you can group them by color to where you want them to go. So let's say I want those four red these three blue, a couple yellow, and a couple white. That's how it'll all work out. Now, uh, I should be able to get a fair distance on the floor here. So this one is sitting right over here. The computer wall. No, nope. this is where it goes. So the computer wall is right here. And I can actually reach the fiber all the way around to nearly the space pod. So I'm not too worried about having too short an amount of uh, LEDs for this purpose, or uh, short uh, fiber for this purpose, rather. And that's the basic idea. Cut a little extra more than you need, then trim down to suit. And there's definitely going to be a few more tricks I'll show you when we get to those, as far as... Uh, setting up all the lights and getting all the fibers to bundle to each individual LED. Last thing I'll mention while I'm at it is that in order to put the fiber in there in the first place, I started drilling all the holes here and it's definitely going to be a tedious process. You can't use a Dremel on this sort of thing, it's just too powerful and too fast and you have no control. So what you need is a uh, pin vise basically. So I've just got a regular drill bit in here. This is probably a 0.5 millimeter. And uh, check out your local hobby store. Look for some indexes. If they're listed in millimeter, you'll be rocking. Uh, if not, then they actually come in numbers from like 60 to 80, somewhere in there. And those relate to a millimeter number, but they aren't millimeters themselves. So a number 68 may actually be a 0.5 millimeter. So that's something I keep an eye out for. In that case, you're just basically going to have to guess. So, oh, here we go. So number 68 is actually a .31 millimeter. 61 is a .39. 72 is a .25. And so on and so forth. So some drill indexes will tell you what the sizes are. In this case, like I mentioned, I'm working with 0.5 millimeter. Uh, there's 0.75 millimeter up here, and these are probably going to be 0.25. One quick way to check is to simply grab some of the appropriate thread. So this is 0.25 millimeter here, and try it in the holes. If it fits nice and snug, it'll be good. If it looks like it might be loose, try the next size up. In this case, this is the .5, and this fits perfectly. So I'm going to drill some more out here with the .5, and uh, basically I've got a lot of drilling ahead of me. There's no point in showing that. It's really tedious work. This is probably going to be the worst of them all. And just for reference purposes... Point five might be a little tight on this. We'll just drill one of these real quick just to cover the process. Of course it would help if I uh, put the uh, drill bit in tight. There we go. Yeah, so at this point five, I'm actually drilling up a little brass. So these are going to have to be closer to point two five. So with hundreds of holes to go, 
I'll catch you guys on the next update when uh, we'll talk some more about either the fiber or some other thing that will be going on. I'll be doing some light tests pretty soon. And I'll catch up with you later. Thanks for watching. See ya.